Good evening, everybody. This is Alderman Lee. It is um, Thursday, September 26th. Uh, it's a little after 6 p.m. We're here for a community zoning meeting regarding the property at 2856 South Emerald. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined us for one of these calls before, as we have these uh, zoning requests or zoning change request meetings, the purpose of the meeting is for the community to hear a presentation um, as to what the purpose of the requested zoning change is for, to see any plans, uh, and then for community members and neighbors to be able to ask questions and raise concerns for whatever concerns they may have. Um, and with that, I'm going to um, hand it over uh, to the attorney representing uh, the requester here, who's Mr. Thomas Moore. We've got this presentation kind of queued up here. Um, folks in the room are getting some paper copies of things, but you'll see those in the presentation as well. So uh, thank you, Alderman Lee, and thank you for rushing back from downtown and, and uh, managing to fit this into your schedule. Um, with me tonight is, is Christy, who uh, owns this property, and uh, she'd like to, uh, right now it's a single family, yes. and she'd like to build a three flat there, which kind of would fit in with the other uh, buildings on the corner, and it would be all family members. Her sister would have one unit, she would have one unit. And, and my other sister, we have an other, other sister. sister. So three, actually, it's three sisters. Three sisters. Yeah. So like we are planning to have like uh, three stories and then like three units. And one, each of us will own one unit. And so right now it's an RS3. In order to be able to build a three flat, uh, she would need an RT4. So basically going up one, one full step. And uh, we have pictures of the buildings around the corner there. This is the second building in, uh, and the three flat would basically uh, fit right in with the, the buildings on that uh, intersection there. And um, and then we have plans showing, you know, a typical three flat, actual plans that she would build. And um, uh, that's kind of it. There's, it's not a complicated case. Each each unit would have. Uh, the, are they two bedrooms? Correct. Each unit is a two bedroom. Two bedroom and one storage room on each floor. Um, and then sorry, and you can see where I am yes. on the presentation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to you want to talk about the. Yes, so like uh, we'll have three stories and then like uh, we'll have three parking space. Um, so like, and then like each of my sister, so like we'll own one story. So it's pretty much my, well, we like my future family, we also like, live in the uh, same building. So that's the plan. Um, that's why like we are try trying to change the zoning and um, yeah, have the, but uh, have the whole family members living in the uh, in the same building. That's pretty much the plan. And um, if the if the zoning will got approved, uh, we will have like the construction to start like um early next year after the winter time. So like um, will be around April or May time frame, and that's the plan. Do you know about how long it'll take to construct this? Uh, typically, I would think like three to four months. So like by summertime, like it should be ready to move in. Yeah. To move in. Is it go are, are all of your names going to be on the deed to this or are they going to be condos that you each individually own? Or is it uh, just... It's not condo. Okay, so it's just one building it's joint, that, that yeah, you're it's joint, joint joint ownership. Correct, okay. correct. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Uh, do you plan to? I see you're not. You're not necessarily building, um, all the way. You've got uh, You've got a setback, side setbacks, front setback. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be a fence around then. Correct. Um, same for the parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. and that, another concern that we sometimes often get in these meetings is. Um, just uh, where trash cans go. I know that sounds 
kind of silly, but it's it's important to to your neighbors. Um, kind of is there a, is there a plan for where those are going to be placed? Um, obviously, you're parking three cars, um, and they they fit obviously on the footprint um, of the property. But that's going to mean that your um, your trash bins are going to have to be wheeled out um, each time it's time to take out the trash. So in general, are, are those gonna be kept here in the backyard then? Yes. Okay. Any questions from uh, folks in the room or on the Zoom? Uh, go ahead, John. So the only question, I have a couple of questions. So first is uh, the, this is recorded audio and video? Yes, sir. And so is there access to this audio and video after the meeting? Yep. And uh, what is the difference between RS3 and RT4? What is the maximum number of units that can go on each each particular zoning property? So an RS3 is single family only. You need 5,000, 5, I'm sorry, 2,500 ground square feet per unit. So in the standard lot, which this is survey... This is it's 25 by one one so it's, just, it's short. Yeah. But so um you can only have one unit on a, on this lot. Um with so, an RS3. In an RS3. Sometimes if you had a large lot, you could have a two flat in RS3, but it's basically single family only because it requires 2,500 square feet. A um RT4, on the other hand, you only need 1,000 ground square feet per unit. So um, you need 3,000 ground square feet to um, obtain, to be able to have three units. So I hope this does. Um, 25 by 115, it might not quite do it. In which case we'd have to go to four point five, or we'd have to make it in our uh, uh, type one, and include the. Um, it's just short twenty eight seventy five. Well, right, it's just short. So one hundred twenty five feet short. Well, so as long as it has ninety percent, we can make it a type one because we have plans, mm -hmm. and we can have if the alderman is amenable, we can have the uh, variance to allow when you have 90% or more, uh, um, you can uh, have the, the extra unit make up the difference with a variance. And, and it can be right part of the, mm -hmm. part of the um, map amendment. The, as of a year ago, they redid the application to allow uh, variances um, that are approved by the alderman and the community group, because what was happening is they would, you, you'd pass a zoning change, and then you have to wait and go to the zoning board and start all over and basically present the same plan again. Uh, and so there's a, a variance that'll, if you have 90% of the total needed, um, that's a, a variance you can put right in. And yeah, and that would be 95%. Right. Um, I, I'm fine with the variance. So, uh, and be, it being a type one, uh, they yeah. can't vary from whatever the plans are um, that they have. Okay, so are you saying that these are the final plans? And, and the question is, how many units can be built on an RS4? Well, RT4, well, you mean? In, RT4. In this lot. No, 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 not in this lot, but oh, RT4. Oh, in general. Well, if you had a, if you, it, it, all it, depends, it depends on the lot size. Okay, so you don't have enough to build three flats right now. You need a variance. Right. So RT4 would allow you to build how many units on a standard lot? Standard lot. Three. Three. Because the standard lot is 25 by 125, which right. is 3170, 3125. Right. right which is 3, 1,000 per, there's three units, and you have a, so you have a little bit, extra. this one has a little Got short, it. that one has a little extra. Got it. Yeah. This one has 125 less, that one has 125 more. So okay. we're, we're okay. even now. So, so you do need a variance, 
And so how yes. do you get a variance? Well, that's up to it, as we were saying before, the uh, traditionally until a year ago, you would first get your zoning change and then you would go to the zoning board of appeals. Uh, just incidentally, I was on the zoning board all through the 90s. OK, and uh, then you would present the case again. And if you had a hardship in this case that the, sh the lot, lot is, is a little bit short, you generally they they grant most of them. And so but now, as of a year ago, the city council in its wisdom said this is crazy that we have two hearings for the same thing. So uh, if you otherwise qualify, you're now allowed to put that right in the uh, request for the ordinance, the map amendment ordinance, and uh, but only if it's a type one, which means you can't change the plan. Right, but, but you didn't apply for a variance yet. He hasn't right. applied for anything yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're that, coming to see you right. first. Right. This is the first step in that process. Okay. All right. Um, and is there is there room for three cars in the in the? Yeah. It, it's the a standard um, a required parking space is eight by eighteen. And so in a 25 foot lot, you have room for three cars, yes. So this is just, if you look up on the screen, it's okay. eight eight feet, four inches by 20 for, for each space. So it is enough. It, it complies. Yes. So it's, okay, so, so eight times three is, so it's exactly 25 feet. Yeah. Okay. That's why they can't put the trash cans out there until it's okay. And so, to be so out. the eight feet twenty five. So the eight feet four inches. Is that going to be a garage? No. Or is that uncovered? It's a, no, it's the parking pad. It's a parking pad because oh, yeah. the, you can't fit a garage. No. Well, you, you don't have room for the walls, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. They haven't created the material for that quite yet. Maybe, right. maybe 50 years from now, they'll put some like <laughs> real thin, strong thing that you can put up there. Well, some people do a carport okay. because yeah. they can just put yeah. it on pulleys. So you have not applied for this permit yet? Not until we came and heard what you wanted to say. Oh, okay. All right. And so with the permit, you need a variance. It, it will be part of the MAP Amendment Ordinance. Okay. All right. You good? I'm fine. All right. Any questions? Uh, comments? Uh, uh -huh. comments uh, looks pretty cool and definitely fits in with the line. You kind of keep that ice wall, mm -hmm. uh, you know, attached to the rest. I had a question. This is close to the um, Alstred Orange line. I don't quite remember. Is this like within the, uh, the, TOD? the TOD? The TOD. Well, is it? It's not, but this it, it doesn't apply here because it's not more than ten units. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. Gotcha. So, what is TOD? Uh, it's uh, the ETOD is an ordinance called uh, that stands for Equitable Transit Oriented uh, oh. Development. I always want to call it design, but it's <laughs> development. Basically, if you are within a half mile of uh, high volume transit, like the Orange Line, um, the the idea is to promote density. So, if you're building an apartment building with ten units or more. Um, you, and I believe it's 10 units or more. You can keep me honest on this. Um, yeah, it, but it, it, it started out as B districts mm -hmm. and then it, uh, it, uh, got expanded to R5s and above. Mm -hmm. And, and as you say, the this idea is, is to, uh, have density near the transportation. Right. So the idea is that people who are living there would be more uh, inclined to use public transit and not own cars. So the parking requirements would generally be one to one, one unit, one parking space. In an ETOD, the only requirement is half a space, 50%. So half a spot per unit. You can ask for an administrative um, adjustment. What do you call it? adjustment. Up or down. Yeah. Um, so you could go up or you could go down. Um, and, you know, we've seen both. Um, so it uh, it encourages uh, more use of public transit at the end of the day. So while this is in an ETOD, it being only three, yeah, yeah, okay. so yeah in our four, in our four yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That was so my, uh, my next question is based on your question. To I'm I'm assuming you're the owner. Yes, she's one okay. of them. Mm -hmm. so, one of them. So her and her sisters. 
Okay, so they are going to be kind of condos because you will, the way you alluded to the, you're going to each own one unit. So they're not, so you, she asked you if, you, if, if they were going to be condos and you said no. But in the, the definition when you is described different. It, yeah. When you described it, you did say you would each own one unit. I think they're, however, they're LLC, whatever the, the, the organization is, the, the format of the, owner of this building, if they all three names go on the deed. I was only asking if they were going to make them into condos or not. And she answered the question that they were not. No, no. I, yeah. I, listen, yeah. I, I think your correct question yeah. was a good question because she alluded to say, mm -hmm. she did say that each one would own a unit. And so that does mean condos. Well, technically, legally, yes. Yeah. Well, technically, I mean, actually, they, they mean condos. If each one is going to own a unit, that's a condo. Is that not true? No, I think the uh, the definition of co um, condo is that like the ownership is different. I can sell my unit, and then my sister can sell her unit. But it's not case, their intention it, it to be not. able to sell individual units. Like no. we have joint ownership, so like my so sister cannot have... sell the unit yeah. herself. It has to be the three of us selling the whole building as okay. a whole. Okay, yeah. and, and yeah. I, I, yeah. and that's fine. And that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Any questions from folks on the Zoom? Kathy or Karen or Gary? Let's see who else is here. And then there's somebody on a phone. Any questions from anybody on the on the Zoom? Yes, I have a quick question. Uh, go ahead, Karen. Yes, um, mine is more just regarding um, like if this is approved and if it goes through. My concern is just safety. Um, because prior to, um, this house selling, like when it was on the market, um, I'm the next door neighbor and they had a surveyor come and essentially, um, in order to get the dimensions of the house, uh, the surveyor, whoever this guy is, I caught them on my security camera. Um, they broke my lock and walked into the little like concrete sidewalk into my backyard to get the measurements. But I'm not aware of who this guy is. I didn't get like an update on like, hey, who this might be. So my concern is safety, especially because I'm, you know, residing in the house right next door. So how plausible is this? And kind of, um, I don't know if any other community members have questions regarding that, but that's my concern. Like um, more details on like if it's approved um, communication wise and all that. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I, I get your, like I'm capturing your question. You have a concern around safety because whoever the whoever the surveyor was who came out to maybe do the the survey of the property um, improperly got on your property, and I, I'm sorry that that happened. Um, and you know you should probably talk to whoever you sent out there because they really shouldn't have done that. No, right. actually, it's like <laughs> it's not me. That it would have been the seller. Yeah, the seller. Oh, the seller yeah. would have. Oh, because yeah. you you didn't own this property previously. You guys just bought it. Correct. Okay. So Karen, I, I'll say um, it, it's a. It's a family of three sisters that are moving in next door to you. I don't think you have anything to worry about from them necessarily. And they'll give you. Uh, we'll give you their the, phone number and their, everything. Their, like, their cell phone them. number. And if there's ever anything like that again, we'll ask you to please call her. Call Christy. So so if I could speak to Karen, can I speak to Karen? Sure. You, you are doing it right now. Karen, th this is John who is in the room. <laughs> so Karen, I think I think what you were really asking is how is the how is the property going to be separated when it is finally finished, and uh, will your property be totally separated from the property next door? Is that is that fair to say? Yes, John, that's completely correct. Okay, so the, so so then the question is, is there going to be a fence, or, or how are they going to separate that? Oh well, there's there is a set. A setback two feet off one side and three feet off the other. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then uh, is there an existing fence or you'll put up a fence? People usually put up fences. Yeah, we don't need yeah. to put it up. Yeah, yeah. that's, um, yeah. I think, Karen, no worries. Like, the safety is my biggest concern as well. <laughs> so, like, I will make sure that, like, uh, we'll have all those, like, gates surrounded by us I, I mean by the uh by the house to make sure that like we have a serene surveillance camera installed as well so Karen, it, are, you, are you to the uh the north or the south are you the corner building no the other way the other way yeah no yeah. On, on the other side you're on the other yeah. side so we can email you a copy of this deck that we're showing right now and you can see where the set where the side setback is um 
I just put that in the chat. Yeah, it's so there's uh it's it's two feet on that side, and then yeah, you, you add in the fence. But I think you know, um, like she's just said here, uh, they do plan to put a, a fence up. I don't know, is is there one that exists today over there? Um, kind from of? my knowledge, there's only a fence that's technically like part of my property that we have up. Yeah, but in the uh, in the future, we will definitely have the fence, Karen. Well, so, uh, so I guess the question when you're talking about fence, does that have to go into the into the uh, request for zoning? No, the fence does not uh, have to go. No, not unless it's higher than uh, six Five, feet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I mean, but for, for to answer Karen's yeah. question, I mean, I'm not. I shouldn't answer Karen's question, but. To clarify, so I guess she's asking about privacy. That that's basically it. Well, is that is Karen? That true? Karen, are you wondering about privacy? You said safety. Uh, yeah. Yes, I in a way I am. I know currently um, how the house is set up the way it is. There are two units, so a front unit and a back unit. And I know from my knowledge, um, based on you know, I mean, I'm living the house next door, just noticing like traffic and people coming in and out. There are currently are already um, two residents living, like one in the front unit, one in the back unit. Um, I guess my concern, I guess, you know, to reiterate is just, yeah, um, like we mentioned safety, I kind of would like to know who lives next to me. I mean, I'm sure everyone in the neighborhood feels the same way. Like we want to know, like I would like to be kept up, especially with construction, more of like, hey, um, we're going to have people, you know, stopping by. So, so I notice I'm not on like high alert, you know, when my, uh, security camera is like always like ding off or um, yeah, I something like that. The, the simplest thing to do here is to make sure that we introduce you to Christy and her. We, we know, yeah. I know with Matt, oh, you, you have uh, Matt. like she has my number. Okay. So uh, Karen, like, again, it's going to be like my family living in the uh, properties. So like, you do not need, really need to worry. It's like, they so are like strangers. When construction starts, like if this, and I-, I oh, okay. I, are you talking so, about construction? Hold on one oh, second. Sorry. Yeah, I, I look, at, I am inclined to approve this. This is the, the kind of, uh, um, this is the kind of zoning change I, I like to see in the ward. It's, you know, replacing an older structure. It's a family that's staying in the ward. Sure. that's investing in the community um so i am inclined to approve the and support the the zoning change here um the question here is when things start to move yeah. right so i think karen would like and please speak up if i'm saying the wrong thing karen yeah. okay um that uh whenever the tenants that are currently in the in the building now are going to be moving out i think Perfect. that would be a good thing for karen to know just flag it for her because she does live right next door um, you know, and it's great to keep in touch with your neighbors like this because you guys can look out for each other, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, so when people are moving out and then when the house is going to be demolished, like give her notice. Don't tell her. Don't call her the day before. Oh, right. Yeah. So as soon as you have a date for demolition, yes. um, let her know. There's actually a, a requirement. There's a posting notice, requirement. Right? Yeah. Well, and a written notice to the neighbors. To the neighbors. OK, so you should be getting a written notice as well. Um, and then when construction is starting. Um, uh, Karen, does that cover it for you in terms of just being kept apprised of like what's happening when things are happening? I think you're, if you're speaking, you're still on mute. Hello? Hi. Yeah, now we can Hi, hear you. Hi, yes. Um, yes, that definitely makes sense. Um, like Christy said, I do have her number. I just wasn't, like I had her number because I saw her prior, like I guess when the house was closing, but prior to the tenants moving in, I wasn't aware aware I just kind of knew based on like hey I see cars parked in the you know driveway or the alleyway I guess you can say um so yeah like you mentioned um Alderman I would love update just you know for my own safety and the safety of my family mm -hmm. absolutely Karen like uh if there's anything I, I can do I, let me know so like you have my number like we can that you can call me anytime, like how we can improve the safety, uh, especially like, well, I think the zoning will change, will take like a couple of months. So like, let me know how I can like work with you, like <laughs> to relieve your like concern on your I, on I the think safety. the best thing you can do is just to be proactive with your communication to Karen. Yeah. So okay. like, you know, it, it sounds like she would have liked to know that new tenants were moving in at the time, right? So that, and that's neither here nor there at this point. Um, and I appreciate you raising it here. 
Um, if you Agreed. can just make sure that you are keeping on top of the communication, not just waiting for Karen to call you, but mm -hmm. making sure that you're being proactive and letting her know because you actually know when things are going on with the with the buildings. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, John. So one more question. Will Karen and other residents have availability to the to view the final plans as they're uh, after they're approved by the city? Yeah. So that's all public knowledge. Well, so I don't know that it's from, from our perspective here at the 11th Ward. I recall all of this is being recorded. Right. We post this along with the attachments. Mm -hmm. Anything that you see here, we post to our YouTube channel. These are the plans. And if the plans, so, although it's the final plans, if the plans change from okay. what was reviewed here, have they, they have to start over again. They got to okay. come back, and we got to do all this again. Right. Okay. That's that's a, what a that's type, one, type one. That's what a type one means. Okay. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> yes. Yes, Kathy, go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Um. I'm. I'm. I'm Kathy. I'm on the other side. I'm on the corner house. Uh huh. And I was looking at the plan, and it and. It is the plan is kind of small. So is it going to be a basement unit, a first floor and a second floor considered three units, or is that going to be um, three units in a basement? It's going to be three units in a basement, and the basement is a duplex. So it goes through. So that's the, the first floor and the basement are one unit. So Correct. that qualifies as one and then two on top. Yes. Okay. All right. And then my other concern is we share a walkway, which um, has, I have access to my windows and my dryer vents and all that. And I just want to, I don't know what the final plan is going to be, and I can take a look, but I, I still want to be able to access the windows and my dryer vent. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a, is there a setback on your side or are you built to the property line, Kathy? Do you know? There is a concrete sidewalk. Half of it is mine and half of it is um, 285 or 2856. So it's the little sidewalk is um, both ours. Like she has one and I have. So I've other got... than, so I just, other than the, um, other than you don't have a side entrance, right? It's just for your windows and your, your dryer access. Yeah, or if I needed to do tuck pointing and things like that, that's I, I have access to all that and cable wires and things of that sort. Yeah, I you might want to just take a look at what that would actually do because maybe you don't want a fence on one side. Then if there's that sort of, it sounds like they don't have a fence now. No, there's yeah. not a fence currently. So if you put a fence up, it would make it very difficult to to maybe access on either side. Actually, um, understood. Yeah. But I, I think before we put on any fans, like definitely we will communicate like before we do anything um, like on the side. But like the plan right now is like, we are making sure that like, we have the fans or the gate up front to make sure that like we are secure. The, uh, yeah, we will have proper security. But on the side, like we have not like have uh, any plan yet to put on the fans on the side. Uh, especially for your sidewalk, but like, because like we have not talked yeah. with our neighbor, but usually when you put up the fence on the side, you we need your to talk about with it. our yeah. neighbor, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, okay so I just wanted to bring that to your attention for something to think about. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it as long as, just so that you know that I might be on that property um, doing things and accessing that yeah. side of the wall. Absolutely. Um, we'll make sure that we connect you, Kathy. Um, so if you if you wouldn't mind, I'll, you can email us your phone number and then we'll we'll make sure we give it to Christy and then you guys can connect separately. I don't okay. need you to put I don't want you to put your phone number in the chat. Um, but if you email at us at uh, ward11 w a r d 11 at city of Chicago dot o r d G, sorry, ORD is O'Hare Airport. <laughs> All right, it's been a really long day. I apologize. Um, but yeah, let's let's make sure. So I where I live, there's I, there's houses on either side of us. Um, and there's not um there's a there's a fence on one side, but not on the other, because we share the gangway. Um that's what yeah, yeah. So to be able to get there. So you yeah. guys can work that out. Yeah. I, I think you know, 
um, you want people to be able to have access to their to their uh, to their side of the building. Um, Kathy, was there anything else from you? Um, no, I just um, no, I guess that's it. I mean, I haven't met the owners yet, so I uh, I'm sure like eventually we'll exchange numbers and and uh, but yeah. at this point, those were my concerns. Yeah, absolutely. So like once I have your number, Kathy, uh, I will give you a call to make okay. sure that you have my number as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, then we'll move on to Gary. You have your hand raised. Yeah. So I was wondering what are like the future plans if um the rezoning from RS3 to RT4 gets approved or not? Like, how is it going to work out? Are the um residents going to take a vote or is this going to be um sent to like further authorities to like decide on a decision because yeah. I know it sounds Sorry, like a lot of people aren't completely opposed to this but a lot of people are still like skeptical or concerned about this rezoning and um, some people may be completely opposed or some people can't agree so I was just wondering um, how it's going to work out and since the owner said if it does she plans to start the reconstructioning by the spring of May um, I was wondering, like, what is going to go on between now till May of 2025? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to explain the process to you. Um, so we have in the 11th Ward a community uh, zoning meeting process. Um, I have the ability as the alder person um, to uh, support or oppose any zoning changes. Generally, these come through our office first, um, and then... Uh, Christy and her attorney, through Mr. Moore, will uh, will will file for a zoning change. It's a map amendment request um, that would change the zoning from the current single family residential to RT four, which is multifamily. Um, that then goes, it gets introduced to the city council at the next city council meeting. Um, probably not this next upcoming one because it's too soon. The next meeting's October 9th, so it wouldn't be introduced till sometime in November. Um, it gets introduced one month and then it gets heard by the zoning committee um, the following month. So this won't get heard until December. Um, at that point, uh, well, at, at some point, the zoning department sends out notifications to everybody that owns a property within 250 feet. There is a, another opportunity for anybody that uh, wishes to speak on it or oppose it. They can go to the, they can sign up to be a public speaker at the zoning committee meeting to let their voices be heard. Um, at that point, the zoning committee will take up the issue, um, and if it's approved from there, uh, they will have an approved zoning change, uh, and then it's how much time between them. Usually the committee meetings right before, usually scheduled right before the city council meeting. Right, and then it goes to the city council for a full, uh, for full approval. Right. So that, the in the best case scenario, will happen sometime in, uh, before the end of the year in December. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Did I miss anything in the chat? Okay, well, with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and provide a uh, um, support letter for this zoning change. I'll give that to uh, Mr. Moore for their application for this map amendment. Um, this will be posted on our 11th Ward um, YouTube channel uh, by the weekend, so other people can see it if they missed it. Um, and as I said, if you live within 250 feet of the current property, you will get a notification. Um, all of this uh, can be found publicly on the uh, Committee on Zoning uh, when the agenda gets posted. So if you see this item come up, um, or any of and any items for the eleventh ward for that matter, and you'd uh, you'd like to express your feelings about it at a city council meeting or at the committee meeting, uh, you can always do so. So with that, I appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Thank you for those of you who came in person. Thanks for those of you who made the time to uh, join us on the Zoom. Kathy, don't forget to send us your phone number um, so that we can connect you with Christy. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Alden.